Welcome to a new video about the wonderful Lanzarote. Today we are going to eat on the island, share some restaurant recommendations and introduce you to a few typical foods from the island. Hi there, I'm Tony Galvez from Road Trip Spain and Portugal where we help you plan the perfect trip with practical information and insider tips. In the week we recently spent in Lanzarote, our goal was very clear. Visit the main attractions and immerse ourselves in the local gastronomy. And every time we sat down for lunch or dinner, we always try to order something typical from Lanzarote so we can later share that experience with you. The mandatory disclaimer, we visited all the places anonymously and paid for the meals from our very own pocket. Let's have a look at the restaurants. The Cofradía de Pescadores La Tiñosa is in Puerto del Carmen and has tables at the back of the restaurant with views of the boats anchored in the harbour. We sat at the table and the first thing that arrives without having to order it is a Lanzarote classic, a basket with warm bread and a basic gyuro, mojo verde and mojo picón which in quite a few places are accompanied by a third sauce. Here it was alioli. The mojo verde, the green sauce, usually accompanies fish and is prepared with green peppers, coriander and parsley, among other ingredients. And the orange colored mojo picón is usually served with meat and is prepared with paprika and a typical pepper from the Canary Islands, which gives a spicy touch to the sauce. The perfect accompaniment to mojos are papas arrugadas, wrinkled potatoes, another classic of the Canary Islands that appears in almost every meal. They are prepared with a local potato variety, small in size. The potatoes are boiled in their skins and a lot of salt is added so that a layer of salt remains around the potato. We also ordered some puntillas, small fried squid, very common in other parts of the Spanish coast as well. And finally, we ordered a dish that is quite popular in the Canary Islands, but not so much in mainland Spain, fried moray eel, which is fried without removing the skin, buttered with gofio flour, which we will talk about later. It has a fairly mild flavor, but we didn't really think much of it. The Stop Bar is a small establishment in the beautiful Yaiza, very close to the Timanfaya National Park. It is one of those places where locals and tourists mix. There is no menu, or at least not a written menu, because the dishes are on top of the bar, with all the delicacies that have come out of the kitchen that same morning. We ordered several tapas. You can also order raciones, which are more abundant, but note that the tapas already come with plenty of food. The first, very typical of Lanzarote, was a garbanzada, made with chickpeas grown on the island. The second, fish with sweet potato, an absurdly delicious wide variety of sweet potato grown in Lanzarote and finally a basic fidewa which is a sort of paella made with vermicelli all washed down with wine from the region of La Geria the volcanic wine. There is no menu and therefore no price list which is something we don't like very much but the prices are very economical. Attention because you can only pay with cash. The bar does not accept cards. If you can't, try to visit the bar in the morning. We were told that when the food they prepare every morning is finished, it's over. They don't prepare more until the next day. Bar stop, highly recommended.
a wonderful terrace overlooking the Riscos de Famara and excellent service made us visit the Costa Famara restaurant twice on two different days. The first time we sat on the outside terrace, the second time with a lot of wind, we sat inside. We started with the essential breads accompanied by mojo verde and mojo picon. Next, we ordered fried goat cheese cubes, as there are no cows in Lanzarote or the cheese is made from goat milk. We also ordered lapas, limpets. Limpets are a type of seafood that exists in many other parts of the Spanish coast, but curiously, it's not very appreciated in places like Galicia. In Lanzarote, it is widely consumed. We like them very much. They have an intense sea flavor that is somehow difficult to describe. And for dessert, a gofio mousse. Gofio is a typical Canarian product, a flour made with roasted millo, which is what corn is called in the Canary Islands, or wheat. It is used in many elaborations, both sweet and savory, and the gofio mousse is sensational. On the second visit to the Costa Famara, we tried a shrimp dish from La Santa, a fishing village on the north coast of Lanzarote, not far from there. And also ordered a fillet of cherne, wreck fish, a delicious variety of local fish that we had not yet had the chance to taste. The price of the meals was not low, but it is also true that we ate fresh products of excellent quality with wonderful views. Highly recommended. La Bodega de Santiago was our most beautiful and most expensive restaurant of the trip. We recommend it for those who want to celebrate something special. It is in the village of Yaiza, next to the Timanfaya National Park. The best thing is to sit at the outdoor tables under a beautiful ficus tree, overlooking the volcanoes and lava fields of the national park. The food is based on high-quality local ingredients, starting with an artisan sourdough bread that was delicious, as we had not tasted in a long time. For starters, we started with a salad of Lanzarote tomatoes with avocado and smoked sardines, and we ordered a garbanzada, a dish for which the restaurant is famous, made with chickpeas from Lanzarote. For main courses, fish and meat. The fish was vieja a type of parrot fish with tapioca. Among all the local fish we tried in Lanzarote, the vieja was one of the ones we liked the most. In the meat section, we wanted to try the most famous meat dish of Lanzarote, roasted bifo, the name given to the kid in Lanzarote. For dessert, we put gofio back in our lives with a gofio cream, quite similar to the gofio mousse we had tasted before. We accompanied the meal with a local wine from La Geria. Everything, absolutely everything was delicious with very good quality ingredients, but the quality comes at a price that was reflected in the total bill, much higher than what we are used to pay. We recommend the restaurant for those who have no budget restrictions and want to eat in a very nice place, typical dishes from Lanzarote. El Mar Azul is a restaurant specialized in fish and seafood in the small village of El Golfo next to the Timanfaya National Park. It is an excellent destination for those who want to eat well on the island. The location of the restaurant is beautiful, with tables in front of the sea. Needless to say that the meal started with mojo verde and mojo picón. In El Golfo you have to order dishes from the sea, and the first one was a very typical delicacy from the islands, grilled octopus. And for the main course, another dish you will see in many places, a parrillada de pescado, a selection of grilled fish from the island accompanied by papas arrugadas. Ask the waiter to tell you what fish is on the grill. We always like to know the name of things. On ours there was bocinegro, vieja, and another one whose name we can't remember, too many strange names. 
Marazul restaurant, highly recommended. We are still at the seafront but in the far north of Lanzarote in the village of Arrieta where there is a very popular beach bar, Chiringuito in Spanish, the Casa de la Playa and once again we came to eat fish. For starters, you can imagine, the obligatory mojos. This time we only ordered yet another parrillada de pescado, grilled fish, which was the same price as the one we ate at Mar Azul in El Golfo, which we have just seen. At La Casa de la Playa, the parrillada came with some limpets, squid and prawns, and three varieties of fish, among which was one of our favorites ever, known in the Canaries as Bicuda and in the rest of the world as Barracuda, with wonderful meat. We really enjoyed the grilled fish at La Casa de la Playa, which is in the case of Mar Azul, we highly recommend. In our search for the most traditional flavors of Lanzarote, we headed inland to eat at La Tegala in Aria. La Tegala is the restaurant of a veteran cultural center with the same name and has an unmistakable flavor of an inland village. Here we were served the best mojos of the whole trip, which we accompanied with some papas arrugadas always with the radar activated to locate the most traditional dishes, we ordered a dish of chickpeas with fish, very tasty, and a very traditional caldo de millo made with corn and containing pork knuckle. For dessert, we threw ourselves on a gofio mousse, which by this point in this video, you should know is our favorite traditional dessert. Very good traditional food at reasonable prices. La Tegala, highly recommended. While in Lanzarote you have to visit a very typical institution of the rural interior of the island, the Teleclubs. They are a kind of social clubs known in other parts of Spain as casinos, círculos, casas de la cultura, where there is always a bar where simple meals are served to a mostly local crowd. Among all the teleclubs in Lanzarote, the one that seemed to have the best reviews was the one in Mozaga and we went to visit it. El Teleclub de Mozaga is a simple and pleasant place. The menu is written on the wall and when it needs updating, you pick up a cloth and modify the list. The must-have mojos came on this occasion inside little glass jars. For the second time on the trip, we ordered fried goat cheese. It is a cheese with a firm enough consistency that it does not melt when fried. We had read many compliments about the black pig and apple croquettes made with pork from Lanzarote and they were really tasty indeed. And we also ordered a rather typical Lanzarote dish that we had not tried yet, the marinated tuna. Excellent in appearance but a bit bland in taste. This time we didn't go for the gofio mousse, we decided to try two other traditional desserts. The first one, ice cream with bien mesabe, which is a very typical preparation of the Canary Islands. Bien mesabe is a paste made with eggs and almonds with a grainy texture, which is served with many other desserts, such as ice cream. Nice, but not extraordinary. The other dessert was a goat cheesecake. Anyone who follows the channel already knows that we love cheesecakes and the one Cecilia ate at the Teleclub de Mozaga earned the distinction of best cheesecake of all time. Absolutely not to be missed. Nice place, friendly service, good food, reasonable prices, we really like the Teleclub de Mozaga.
There is a bar next to Bodegas La Geria, the Taberna La Cepa, where we did not have a proper full meal. But we did take the opportunity to try a table of local cheeses accompanied by wines from the winery with spectacular views. If you like cheese in Lanzarote, you can't miss the local goat cheese. All goat because you know that in Lanzarote there are no cows. Pairing perfectly with the cheese, the wines of the Lanzarote denomination of origin are also exceptional, especially the dry and semi-dry whites made from the Malvasia Volcanica grape variety. In the video with our top 15 of Lanzarote, we talk about wine production on the island. And with a tropical beer by the sea, a beer brewed in the Canary Islands, we finish our gastronomic route through Lanzarote. We hope we have given you enough ideas for you who are interested in tasting the local flavors wherever you go. Lanzarote is also an amazing island when it comes to food and drink. As always, as you know, if you have any questions, take advantage of the commentary box to ask. You will see now on the screen an essential video about the Lanzarote that completes the information we put here. Everything you need to prepare the perfect trip to Lanzarote is there. Don't miss it. Até mais. Hasta la próxima. See you soon.